So you've stumbled across this thing called SCP. You've come to realize that there is a huge website involved and you are not sure where to begin or even what's going on. Then this video is the right one for you because it's a simple introduction to the SCP Foundation. Secure, Contain, Protect. These three words make the initials and the motto of the Foundation. But what is it? I will explain it in the simplest way possible, as if you have never heard about it before. By the end of the video, you will know the basics in order to continue exploring this universe by yourself, because it wouldn't be fun if I spoiled you everything, of course. First of all, the SCP Foundation is a fictional organization documented by the web-based collaborative fiction project of the same name. On the SCP Foundation wiki, the majority of work consists of special containment procedures that describes an SCP object and the means of keeping it contained. The website also contains thousands of Foundation tales, which are short stories that take place within the SCP Foundation setting. The series has been praised for its ability to convey horror through its scientific and academic writing style, as well as for its high standards of quality. Now imagine a world similar to ours, even call it a parallel dimension or universe where anomalies exist. These anomalies are sometimes beyond human comprehension, are very beneficial or dangerous, or simply characters, circumstances, materials, events of a fiction novel turned into reality. This is the universe where the so-called SCPs and SCP Foundation exists. Operating worldwide just outside public's view, the SCP Foundation is quite akin to a sort of police force against the supernatural. They collect a catalogue objects, people and places that are anomalous in nature, from seemingly innocuous like a rock that can change your physical sex on contact to the outrageous dangers, like an animate concrete statue capable of crossing a room and snapping your neck in the time it takes you to blink. The SCP Foundation is a huge organization which is globally trusted to catalogue almost 6,000 artifacts, beings, phenomena and many more at the time of this video. It is a major organization with a number of laboratories, facilities and networks capable of securing, containing or even destroying these anomalies that are individually named as Special Containment Procedures or SCPs, followed by a given coded number. The Foundation doesn't just tell them though, they try to figure out how they work, how to keep them in check, how to fix them if something goes wrong, to keep them from inflicting physical or psychological harm on the world population. Their goal is to keep people from living in fear or suspicion and to maintain human independence from extranormal and supernatural influences to secure anomalous objects, to keep people from knowing of their existence, contain them so they can't get out, which makes it easier to protect the world from them. So that's what secure, contain and protect means. Next in the wiki you will find that all SCPs are assigned an object class, which indicates how easily an SCP can be contained. There are five primary classes used in the foundation. Safe, Euclid, Kidder or Keter depending on how you pronounce it, Thomil and Neutralized. Let's start with Class Safe. Safe class SCPs are anomalies that are easily and safely contained. This is often due to the fact that the Foundation has researched the SCP well enough that the containment does not require significant resources or that the anomalies require a specific and conscious activation or trigger. Classifying an SCP as safe, however, does not mean that handling or activating it does not pose a threat. For example, SCP-343. This one is a male, seemingly raceless and humanoid in appearance. SCP-343 was discovered walking the streets of Prague and detained after a staff member witnessed him disappear from the streets and reappear on a rooftop. Class Euclid. Euclid class SCPs are anomalies that require more resources to contain completely or where containment isn't always reliable. Usually, this is because the SCP isn't completely understood or it is unpredictable. Euclid is the object class with the greatest scope and it's usually a safe bet that an SCP will be in this class if it doesn't easily fall into any of the other standard object classes. A popular example is SCP-093, which in short is a red disk that can take someone into an alternate dimension. Class Keter 
Keto class SCPs are anomalies that are exceedingly difficult to contain consistently or reliably, with containment procedures often being extensive and complex. The Foundation often can contain these SCPs, due to not having a solid understanding of the anomaly or lacking the technology to properly contain or counter it. A Keto SCP does not mean the SCP is dangerous, just that it is simply very difficult or costly to contain. An example is SCP-055, which is one of the most mysterious objects in containment. Its overall physical appearance is unknown beyond its notosphere, and that's because of its effect on the mind and memory of humans. Class Thaumiel Thaumiel class SCPs are anomalies that the Foundation uses to contain or counteract other SCPs or anomalous phenomena. Even the mere existence of Thaumiel class objects is classified at the highest levels of the Foundation and their locations, functions and current status are known to few Foundation personnel, like SCP-2000 which is to be activated during any end-of-the-world scenario. It is a massive subterranean facility possessing a vast array of anomalous technology that can be used to reconstruct civilization in the event that the world ends. Class Neutralized Neutralized SCPs are anomalies that are no longer anomalous, either through having been intentionally or accidentally destroyed or disabled, like SCP-1470, which is a telepathic spider. The next information you usually see is the special containment procedures, which is the process that the Foundation goes through in order to contain that specific entity. Every procedure is different for each entity, of course. It can be as simple as just letting the entity be as it is and observe it, but it can also get pretty complicated and lengthy with different steps and rules they have to follow. And there are some SCPs that the Foundation doesn't know how to contain, there are no standard procedures, of course, because each SCP is unique, so it always varies from entity to entity. Then what follows is the description of the SCP, which is written in a scientific tone and it describes the appearance of the entity and its nature. Also, it contains information like where the SCP was located, different interviews and anything else that is important. When an SCP is found, usually few agents are called to retrieve the anomaly and wipe the memory of the public but sometimes a whole team is needed in order to retrieve an SCP. These teams are known as Mobile Task Forces or MTFs. They are elite units composed of personnel drawn from across the Foundation and are mobilized to deal with specific threats or situations that sometimes exceed the operational capacity or expertise of regular field personnel. Mobile Task Force personnel represent the best of the best of the Foundation. A common way that the Foundation's researchers learn more about the SCPs is through D-Class personnel. D-Class or Disposable Class personnel are expendable individuals used for testing SCPs, notably killer class objects. Class D personnel are typically drawn worldwide from the ranks of prison inmates convicted of violent crimes, especially those on death row but civilians can also sign up to be part of the Class D program at the Foundation and some of them are taken from other sources like Foundation employees can be demoted to D-Class. So they are actually used to test SCPs, interact with them, explore some new SCPs and take the risks in general. On the other side we have the O5 Council. These are the people who have ultimate control over the Foundation. Each O5 member knows almost everything there is to know about the Foundation and its activities. Between them all, they know every single secret that the Foundation holds. Most Foundation personnel spend their entire careers without seeing them. A lot of low-level members don't even know they exist. Most people outside the Foundation have never heard of them or don't think they are real. Everyone is afraid of them. That's what happens when you hold supreme power over one of the scariest organizations in world history. But the SCP Foundation is not the only group with an interest and investment in the paranormal and metaphysical. There are many other groups in existence who possess, use or attempt to create SCP objects either for the personal gain or for the protection of mankind. Some are rival organizations, some are splinter groups of the Foundation, and some are trusted associates of the Foundation. 
All these are called groups of interest. Some examples are the Black Queen, the Factory and Anderson Robotics. So that was a basic introduction to this universe and now you are ready to visit the website and start reading and exploring all the different SCPs that the Foundation knows. There is not a best place to start reading because each SCP is interesting and unique in its own nature. Also, you can find a lot of tales on the wiki about the SCPs and the SCP universe providing a different point of view. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more explanations and explorations of this universe.